Welcome to the PHNX Sun Devil Show. I'm Big Coke, Shane Mock here with Eric Ruby and DJ Jacob Franklin. He's got a kid behind the Mac making all the magic happen on this awful Wednesday. Jeez. How's everybody feeling today? Answer, bad. Um, Eric? Yeah, man. Uh, when it rains, it pours. Yeah. And uh, it is a goddamn hurricane mm-hmm. right now in Arizona sports. Across all sports. Yeah. And... Uh, the vibes, uh, vibes are low. Not vibes great. are not high. So that's why in this show we're going to get out of Arizona Woo-hoo! and and look at everything as a whole. Got a lot on the docket today. Uh, something that we haven't really addressed was you know this this article and 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 just the idea of a super league happening in college football that College Sports Tomorrow has proposed. That, that big article, big ideas and. A lot to get into, a lot of hypotheticals, uh, and also Cooper Perry's announcement later today at 3 p.m., which we will talk about as well. But Eric, let's fix NIL. Let's do it right here. Oh, you and me, brother. I, I'm ready. We're, we're ripping. We're going to fix it. I'm going to call Charlie. I've actually called in the NCAA, yep. and they're going to come in. They're going to be and here. They're going to listen, I think they're and they're the going to rewrite everything. Yep. They're, they're in the chat. They're hitting the like button. They're yep. subscribing to PHNX, just like you guys should do. I'm I'm, I'm ready to change the world, Let's do Shane. It. I'm ready. So the gist of what College Sports Tomorrow wants to do, College Sports Tomorrow is this 20-person group of influential people. First of all, how do you get in a group like that? <laughs> I would love to be in a group. Like, that's how they describe They're just influential people. You think they're just like sitting at lunch, and they're like, we should form a group. Yeah, we should form a we group. Have, let's, we should have a group. Let's go get some powerful people together. Um, the group includes Brian Rolap, who's the NFL's number two executive, uh, Sixers owner David Blitzer, and lead organizer Len Perna of Turnkey's ZRG, which is a search form for jobs. But but it's, the reason why he's relevant here is because he's placed almost all of the top conference commissioners in their current positions as recently as Big Ten's Tony Pat. P- Pietti? Sure. Yeah. That's how you pronounce it. Um, yeah. So what they want to do is in in the landscape of college football, basically get rid of the college football playoff, get rid of conferences, oh, and turn <laughs> to this eight-division Super League. And what it would be would be seven, ten-team divisions, with, and they would be geographically sensible, as I like to call it, because if you've been watching the show for a while, you know how much I – fucking hate (laughs) teams like Stanford playing Rutgers. It just makes no sense. Uh, So the the Pac-10 would be a thing again, probably. Uh, I don't know if they'd call it that, but it would be in that region. And so there would be seven, uh, 10 team divisions with major programs in them. So it's basically like the, 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 the power seven. Yeah. It says like 70 of the most influential teams in, in college football, and then the eighth division would be another 10-team division, but that would be like mid-majors and teams that would have to play and get promoted to this division. So it's like it's a funnel where you think of the Premier League, the bottom three teams get relegated and the top three get promoted from the league below. There would be a subdivision of two or, or a, a level two where those teams could play into the Super League. That is college football. Initial reactions to what that would mean. I mean, I think it'd be fun. Yeah. I I genuinely think it would be fun. I know that the path that college athletics is on is not great. Mm -hmm. Um, Conferences are barely even conferences anymore. The Big 12 has like 25 teams in it. The Big 10 has like 20 teams in it. Uh, The Pac-12 no longer exists. It's the Pac-2. It it's barreling down a very strange path and as wild of a concept as this maybe seems like like if we just pretended like this was already in place it makes so much sense yeah it makes so much sense especially like you said the geographically located part even without the relegation we're just talking like the top 70 teams super league kind of nfl style playoffs based nfl style where the top team from each league plus a couple wild cards as well it 
it all would kind of bring a cohesion to college football that it doesn't have right now. Mm -hmm. And it's not like, oh, man, who's watching college football with these leagues, right? And if you had this conversation or the conferences, if you had this conversation five, ten years ago, I think that this idea would be scoffed at because you're like, why would you get rid of the Pac-12? Yeah. Right? Like, why would you change anything? But now here we are, and and this is very tantalizing. Yeah, and and the reason why it would would help NIL is because there would be one governing force Mm. uh, above everything. And, you know, you you already have the NCAA, but that's – they don't oversee everything because there's individual individual conferences and – and and look, I don't think this is going to happen in the near future because of TV deals and and money and all yeah. of that. But it would help because it would it would eliminate conferences like in in their governing ability, and the playoffs would be based solely on field performances, promotion and relegation for the smaller schools. As I said, uh, direct player payment is another mm. big thing, and an overseeing of NIL and the transfer portal. Uh, again, this is just college football, and it would help college football. But overall, like that, the, the, having one centralized governing power, I think, is where this thing could actually really work. Plus, I again, the geography it just makes sense. And one of the things that they mentioned in the article was kind of maybe some looming legal troubles that yeah. the NCAA could see with a lot of NIL and and even former players who didn't get uh, representation in NIL suing for damages and like NIL is in a vacuum a good thing yeah paying college athletes for the services they provide is a great thing it's just it's the way that it should go they make you a ton of money you pay them a ton of money Uh like a plus b you know or one plus two equals three yeah right but the way that it's just been completely dove into there's been very little like full-on regulations on things like they're they're implementing some new ones in the ncaa because they're noticing that some people are being taken advantage of or not being fully vetted for for nil deals it's like the wild wild west and when you as a massive massive organization in the ncaa as a whole have so many different governing bodies across all of your like important schools and conferences and then within that they're doing their own nil stuff they're doing it their own way you open the door to so much risk to so much liability and it would not be surprising if in the next couple of years we saw a lot of that come to light So if you were able to get everything under one umbrella, have one blanket set of rules, have one like kind of governance, like ruling over NIL and payments and everything like that, like you, you're not only protecting the athletes because they're not going to screw themselves, like they're not going to go into a deal and take it with somebody who, you know, isn't all that they promised to be, but they just did it because they wanted to make a quick buck because that's the promise of NIL. Like if you can eliminate all of that while compensating, while having teams play teams that are close to them and then have an effective playoff system, it it's almost too good to be true. And you're right with the whole TV deal thing where it's like the, the reality is if this were to happen, it's not happening anytime yeah. soon. And and I hope Donald's on here because a, a lot of what the ideology would be is it's 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 effectively college football communism. <laughs> Um, I, if he's not here, he probably just heard you and woke up out yeah. of his nap, and now he's here. Uh, what, and what I mean by that is, the schools that are participating in the Super League would all get, you know, revenue splits. And I don't know if the revenue splits would be even. Well, I, no, I, I think it even. I think it said that the the top tier programs would get a higher percentage. Okay. And, and so it's it's everybody's under the same umbrella, but they definitely recognize that like an Alabama and Notre Dame. So yeah, it says unlike soccer league, the revenue distribution would not be an even split go. among it's all not competitors. Communism, Donald. Sorry. Yeah. So it, it, go back to sleep, Donald. You can <laughs> listen to this later. I know you just woke up out of your slumber, uh, but like top brands like Alabama and Notre Dame would receive more of the financial pie. Um, and, and that's kind of where it lands in the TV deal stuff, because a lot of the reasons why this is not picking up a lot of steam, even though on paper, I think a lot of college football fans would say this is ideal yeah. is because all of these leagues have billion and billion and billion dollar deals with TV broadcasters and not just for the next one, two, three years. We're talking 2030, 2029, like for a long time. And so in order for this to even be remotely possible, there needs to be a major financial incentive. 
which there could be, but you're talking buyouts, you're talking renegotiation, you're talking all sorts of hoops that you have to jump through just to try it out. Yeah, yeah, that's why it doesn't seem like a feasible thing to happen in the in the near future but it is it is it is i think where college sports are going they're becoming a lot more of one big industry uh, mm-hmm. rather than you know small schools that are gaining revenue by winning games like it used to be uh, now it's just kind of oh the tv deals paying for the players so it doesn't really matter uh let's talk about the fun of it though yeah um, obviously the playoffs are going to be awesome you mentioned it so everybody every division would have a division winner that is automatically qualified for the playoff and then there would be eight wild card spots depending on, you know, just like the NFL. It's not like every team gets two teams from each or every division gets two teams. It's based on record, uh, tiebreakers, all that. So it's very m- much more like the NFL where the teams that won are get rewarded for winning and there's no college football playoff committee. Look, I, I'm in favor of the college football playoff committee because it's just it's college sports is so unique you build your own schedule you're responsible for the strength of schedule but for the people that whine and complain about that the you know it's it's all subjective uh there you go that that that's a that's a much different way to look at it as i said similar to the nfl structure which is a, a very good one as as we've seen from their revenue splits i mean yeah and you're not completely getting rid of, of you know oh the what, what happened to the college football playoff like you're, you're just essentially changing how teams get selected yeah as yeah. well and, and and you're right like there is a lot of you know being subjective when it comes to to college sports in general when you look at records i mean if we talk about just asu this year like like their non-conference versus non-conference in years past is it, different right when you're playing in the big 12 is different when you're playing in the pac 12 like y- People play different teams. Records don't always mean the same thing. Yeah. Somebody could be 3-0 and to start the season, but they played three absolute cupcakes, and they're a worse team than somebody who's 0-3. Yeah. Right? So when you break it down to just purely numbers on this large of a scale, including some of those mid-majors, and especially in that wild card region, mm-hmm. y- you can get some numbers lie to you moments. Yeah. But um, maybe, maybe there's a way to tweak that. Maybe there's a way to incorporate that. But it feels like if you're going to go so big and so kind of cookie cutter, you, you need to, to keep it basic on the, yeah. on the numbers. And another fun thing about the divisions is it brings back – you know, the, the rivalries that were quote unquote lost, you know, yeah. you, you, you keep the pack, you keep the old sec, you keep the ones that it makes sense that they're rivals cause they're right next to each other. Right. Like it, it just makes more sense. Um, and so that, that's a fun thing as well because the old head in me hates it. And I, and, and, and I, I hate the way that, that college sports are trending because of that. And I think this would be a very good solution, but you know, as we said, it's, it's going to be hard to get it done my favorite part i think is the relegation yeah part of it sure. because Kent that's State fighting hard <laughs> right to get back up well well like i i feel like in all sports you you've had that conversation you know nba nfl like you're like oh can, can you relegate somebody can you send them somewhere else like if a team is so bad can you replace them with a minor league team and, and it's just it's not feasible yeah. because of the gap in talent but nowadays the, there are some really really good non power 5 schools out there and if you give them the opportunity to promote themselves to be on a higher level to earn more money even they even though they won't be earning the same amount of money as in Alabama or in Notre Dame yeah. or in Ohio State or in Oregon but you're still being put on a similar pedestal you're still giving a chance to compete and for for sickos which, you know, a lot of uh, people that are in here right now are probably sickos. I know you're a sicko. Yeah. Like that whole relegation conversation yeah, so and looking at the teams who were underneath as yeah. well who are going up, it, it adds an extra element and it adds an extra layer. And, and I feel like it's just fun. Yeah. And, and at the end of the day, what you were kind of saying is it seems like college sports is going away from the fun mm-hmm. and, and more to the funds. Uh, and, yes. and, and that's just... It's sad to see, but it's it makes to see sense. It be a business. Yeah, yeah everything it, it a makes business. sense. Everything's about money, um, and that sucks. You know, what doesn't suck. What making money on BetMGM? <laughs> Amen. Because that is fun. Uh, I can admit when I'm wrong. And yesterday, I made the second worst bet of my life. The worst bet of my life, as I was staying on the bet show, was once I took an under live. I remember I was in a car on an Uber back home from Old Town, so there were you know other factors involved in the decision making. Uh, but I was like, oh, Kings. Kings Thunder, I want to say the game was, or it was Clippers, Kings, Clippers, Thunder, something like that. 
I love the under in this game. Like that there there's it was it was like five points too high in the third quarter. I was like, there's no way they're gonna get to this total. Well they ended up going into double overtime, and that's a killer <laughs> by itself. But not only did it end up going into double overtime, it ended up being the second highest scoring game of all time in the NBA. That's tough. It was like three hundred something some 350 something points they scored like a, it was like 170 to 8 to 175 i remember that game yeah something ridiculous uh and the yesterday I, I gave out on the bet show unfortunately the sun's first half not even the, oh, the, the sun's the sun's minus seven would have been bad the sun's first half minus three and a half is the worst thing I've ever given out. Oh so God. RIP to that uh oh, but you don't man. have to make bad picks like i do when you download the bet on gym sports recap you can make good ones and all you got to do is download it on ios or android sign up and deposit at least ten dollars into your bet on gym sportsbook account place your first wager and receive up to 1500 back in bonus bets if it loses and if your bet does lose wah, wah, your bonus bets will wah, wah. be available once your initial wager is settled Woo! sign up for betmgm use that bonus code phnx place your first betmgm sportsbook wager through the betmgm sportsbook mobile app for at least ten dollars and you'll receive 1500 dollars back in bonus bets if your bet loses check out the show notes for full details and listen to me talking about disclaimer Bonus bets expire in seven days. One new customer offer only. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Available in the U.S. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY-467-369, New York. Call 1-800-327-5050, Massachusetts. 21 plus only. Please gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP, Arizona. 1-800-BETS-OFF, Iowa. 1-800-981-0023, Puerto Rico. First bet offer for new customers only. Subject to eligibility requirements. Bonus bets are non-withdrawable. In partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. See BetMGM.com for terms. U.S. promotional offers not available in New York, Nevada, North Carolina, Ontario, or Puerto Rico. Well, since you mentioned the Suns. Uh-huh. Last night was quite the experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, only three games left in the season. They've Thank got God. the Clippers tonight. We're doing another watch along. I mean, there might be some play in playoff stuff, depending on how they decide to show up. Uh, but this Friday, this just in, breaking news from last night. We're doing another watch party. Oh, no. Over at Gila River Resorts and Casinos, because even if the Suns want to bring the vibe down by scoring four points in 10 minutes, the vibes will always stay high over at Gila River Resorts and Casinos. So we're heading back out to Wild Horse Pass. We were just there for two shows over the weekend. Big Pokey was there for both of them. Uh I was there on Friday. No longer the collection with Mike Bibby. That was great, but... It's still always a fun time over at Wild Horse Pass. So stay tuned for more details on that. But if you can't make it out to our watch party, which is always a good time, you can just go to Gila River Resorts and Casinos at any of their many locations across the valley because truly nobody does it better. An authentic and an immersive casino experience. You walk in, they've got their state-of-the-art gaming floor, slot machines, blackjack tables, live table games, table themes to all the different Arizona sports out there. Truly, when you walk in, like you can you can smell it, right? You mm-hmm. walk and go, oh, oh, this this is gonna be a fun night. Anytime I've walked in, especially a wild horse pass, I believe that is my favorite location, although it's hard to pick. Uh, you can just feel the energy. Plus, if maybe you don't want to go to go to their uh, sports book, the Bet MGM sports book, or the Swing Suite, or you don't want to go play some live table games or slots or anything like that, you can have a little staycation because they are also a resort. You can get a nice upscale dining experience. You can get a little bit more casual poolside. Have a nice little relaxer since all Arizona fandom is just absolute <sighs> stress right now. You can go get away from that over at Gila River Resorts and Casinos because you do you, even if you're a stressed Arizona sports fan at Gila River Resorts and Casinos. Visit playatgila.com for more details. Well, let's talk a little bit more about this proposed change to college football. Mm -hmm. Um, As the Syracuse chancellor so eloquently put, he said, the current model for governing and managing college athletics is debt. And I agree. It is, and it, it, as I've said many times on the show, it's gone a little too far in the way of the players, which isn't inherently a bad thing because mm-hmm. I think they deserve to have, you know, rights <laughs> and ability to own <laughs> hot take, yeah, hot take ability <laughs> to own, you know, th- their own name, image, and likeness, and make yeah. money off of it. Uh, that being said, it, it it has you know kind of changed college sports forever, but you can't pull it back. It's just not going to work. And so this is the way I think that at least a, a way, a, a kind of an outline to how it could it could work in the future. Um, but let's lay out some pros and cons. Of yeah. It. Pros. It's more fun and it makes more sense. Big pro. Con. The smaller teams like your Kent State, as I mentioned, don't have as good as a chance to succeed as they once did. But did they really ever? With with the college football playoff, I so mean, maybe right. that's a pro. I, I think it now might they be can a pro. make the college football playoff. This team was never making the college football playoff unless the proposed college football playoff that they 
are doing now it includes mid-major teams like that getting an automatic bid, but I don't really think it does. Yeah, I, I don't know if that does. I, I think it's better for teams like Kent State because when you put everything under a full umbrella, y- you are essentially putting people on an even playing field. Yeah. And, and of course, there's going to be advantages for bigger schools and smaller schools, and it's going to be harder for a school like Kent State to, to find true, long-lasting success. But at the same time, this is all about visibility. This is all about buy-in. And if you're able to, as a program in Kent State, get more casual viewers, get more casual fans, get more diehard supporters, you're going to be able to get more money. You get more money, you invest that back into your players, you're able to offer more in any sort of NIL deal or whatever NIL arrangement is happening with this, and you're able to succeed more. And you're able to be a more prominent school even though you're on the lower end of these 70 big teams in these different conferences, it you can kind of see it both ways, right? They can either get lost in the mix, but at the same time, they could also be in the mix, which is completely different than yeah. before. So it, I think overall it would be a positive, but I can see how it would be a little cautious yeah. with that thought process. Yeah. Another pro, you're, you know, as I mentioned before, your one governing power is is there is is in place yeah uh but the con you're taking the rights you kind of gave to these players away yeah uh it, it, uh, theoretically we don't we don't know exactly what would yeah. be changed but what are what are some things you think that would help it being implemented with this one governing power to help the nil landscape now okay in the so- transfer portal Regulation, it is a good thing in this scenario, but regulation to the point of like, like if, if you treat it like a pendulum, right? Yeah. It was so far in the wrong direction yeah, before a NIL, bit, a little bit, right? Where you're literally punishing players for benefiting off of what they brought yeah. as far as millions of dollars into schools and, and the NCAA and all of that, right? Then the pendulum starts swinging and you hit, oh, NIL, perfect, awesome. They're finally getting what they deserve. And then it kind of went a little bit too far, yeah. right? Just and back a little bit. It, it doesn't mean they don't deserve it, but it does mean it's kind of made things tricky. So I think this kind of brings it back where you're still making sure players are paid. Because I promise you, there is absolutely nothing that is going to pass and nothing that's going to go into it if the players don't get their fair share of it. I, I think we're at the point now where they've already gotten it. That's not going to be taken away completely. It just might be more regulated, more consistent, And honestly, easier to digest, easier to understand, and maybe even easier for the players. They might cost them like uh, 5%, 10% if you're not able to go to that crazy height. But overall, most players aren't getting that. And so if you're able to make it consistent legally, like professionally, consuming-wise for 18, 19, 20-year-olds, I I do think that that's a benefit. But I'm also like... Get get as much as you can. Get a bag. Like I I understand why players and, and kids are doing what they're doing, uh, but it is a little bit of the wild wild west. So I, I think that that's a, a positive spin on it. Yeah, speaking of Clint, um, in the chat just had his own guy leave for turning down four hundred thousand uh, dollars, which is just so insane. Uh, I saw a tweet the other day about somebody who was like, I just got off the phone with a coach and a guy who averaged five points a game wants a hundred k. It's just it's ins- it's insanity. I should have been a college athlete. <laughs> I should have been a college you athlete. Average, could, yeah, that averaging, was just a decision you made to not yeah, be a college athlete, yeah, right? You think yeah. you're averaging five points a game at, at Division One level? No, not at Division One level. Oh, yeah, yeah it was a Division One athlete. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Listen, I got lanky arms. Yeah. I got, I got, I got a long wingspan, baby. Defense. Hey. 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 Man. Can, man. Okay. Um, AS, would ASU make it to the Super League? Shut up, Tony. Stop being so mean. Come on. Come on <laughs> yes, guys. they would make it to the Super League. Um, anything else? Oh, well, last last thing on this. Yes or no? Would you want to do this? If you could do this tomorrow, would you want to do this? Oh, yeah. Yeah. If yeah. I if I had the choice to snap it, absolutely. Let's go. Like, I, I listen, Bring I'm, back the Pac-10. I'm all about fun. I'm all about paying players. And I'm all about making like sports more accessible. Yeah. And, and, and I'm all about trying new things. I, a lot of people hate it on the NBA for trying the play-in tournament. It's, it's awesome. a massive success. Yeah, it's awesome. The in-season tournament. It's only been one year. It was a pretty big success at the time, and it hasn't really made any big negative impact. Like, the MLB with the pitch clock, I I get it. it it's maybe hurting <laughs> some pitchers' elbows, and we maybe need to interest in that conversation. I don't know if it is. It, it might be the pitchers just throwing that fast itself. It, I the, think it's an overall net positive yeah. for the sport. I, I think the changes they've made is an overall net positive. So I'm all for changing things. I'm all for looking at something and saying, how can we do it better? But 
that's only if I can snap because there's just, yeah. there's no chance that that happens. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm in the same boat. If 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 it could happen like tomorrow, yes, do it, 100. percent I I think it I think it'd be great. I think it would be better for the sport. I think you you would kind of start to correct it. Um, but who really knows? It this it's hard to see where this is going because it it, it has almost become mercenary work with the era of the transfer portal and being able to transfer twice and three times, four times, like what have you. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I also think that it was a perfect storm with COVID and extra years of eligibility. And, and I think they're going to become a little bit stricter on that uh, here in the next year or so, but who really knows they could go the other way because we saw them try to be very strict on it at the start of this year. And then the courts got involved and everybody was allowed to play. So well, so a couple things with that. The the NCAA is weighing change to transfer eligibility, which means that uh, transfer would not be immediately eligible to yeah. play after transferring multiple times. Which is how it was before. Adam Miller. Yeah, but I mean, it was, it was like that before Adam. Oh, it yeah. Was like that for, it was like that for the first time you transferred. You had to sit yeah. out a year. And so they're, they're maybe becoming a little bit more lenient with that. Um, but I, I think overall, like... <laughs> This is this was the part of the article that kind of got me like, oh, okay, something probably does need to change. Multiple prominent college leaders in recent months have spoken bluntly about a future in which schools directly pay their players. Private equity funding could provide schools an influx of capital to address those legal matters and competitively compensate their athletes in return for a stake in the school's athletics business. You basically become mercenaries. Like at its core, when NIL was first made, it was so like a local business could endorse a local athlete. Yep. And you got some really, really cool things like Dakotas Crawford doing the air conditioning yeah. commercial, right? And now it's just turned into, can the Tyson Chicken Nugget man give Arkansas enough money to hire yeah. John Calipari and arm him with NIL, right? And is that a bad thing? Maybe in some ways, but you sure these guys are getting more money, these players are getting more money, but... It's it's just a little bit risky when you start going into private equity funding and basically saying, hey, we're going to invest $100 million into your program, like go out there and, and hire some mercenaries. And then we're going to you know, have a massive stake in what's going on yeah. and, a stay, and a say in what's going on as well. It's it's a little bit concerning. Yeah. The I, I just I, again, it's such a hard way to correct it because I inherently I don't think people did the wrong thing by by going as far as they did to give players the 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 power that they have now. No, I don't think it's but wrong. I think it's still a fair to recognize that it has gone too far. Yeah. It's so it's just it, it it's a it's a situation of uncharted territory and and this is what happens when new things, you know, are implemented with yeah. a, as fast as they are. Um and it's it, it's something we've never seen before because No. because in the era of social media and the era of you know, you being your own brand, like this was never going to happen until mm-hmm. until the internet and phones and 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 influencers became a real thing. Like that's a huge reason why NIL has become w- what it is. Like before, to get a college player to do a commercial, he had to go shoot it in a studio and and all of these paperwork and sign. Now you get mm-hmm. a DM from fucking Flat Tummy T on Twitter. And you can post it and make a bag off of that. Like that's just what it is now. Yeah. Um, so and, and that's again, it's not, not a bad in thing. a vacuum a bad thing. But when it's completely unregulated, and and there have been some comments about how there have been some kind of like nil schemes, yes. and, and how some college kids have been really negatively affected by Dude, this. Look at our our supposed starting quarterback. Like he was so taken advantage yeah. of nil wise before he was even a college athlete. Yep. And even even adults in the room, like this is not something where you can have a, a 30 or 40 year old by your side and they completely understand this. If anything, they understand it less yeah. because it's just not what was going on. And so you've got teenagers and early 20 year olds and in some cases people who need to get a job <laughs> uh, all basically navigating this space for the first time without somebody who's done it you know, before them that can offer some sort of wisdom. Right. Like that's that's really tough. That's a really tough sell. And. At at the same time, it's also great because you can get so much money, but, you know, people are being taken advantage of. Kids are doing things that they probably shouldn't be doing or getting screwed or whatever. And, and then there's also, like, the, the NCAA is, ba- is going to ban player props uh, yeah. as well. Like, there's there's levels to this to where 
it is not a bad thing, but too much of a good thing can lead to bad consequences. And the same thing in the NBA, player empowerment, right? Players want to decide where they want to play. They have every right to do that. They have every right to make as much money as possible. Yeah. But now you sign three max players. You can't fill anything else. There's no money left for the, the middle tier players. They're all getting minimum contracts. And now players can request a trade with four years left, yep. right? Like they have every right to do so, but is it the best of the sport? What yeah. what needs to change? And and that's kind of where we're sitting here. But something that never changes, Shane. What? It's our friends over at Desert Financial Credit no. Union because they are the official retail banking partner of Arizona State University and the official retail banking partner of myself. My entire life, the only place I've kept my money, the only people I've worked with, the only people I've talked to is Desert Financial Credit Union. That is not an ad. That is Loyalty. just real life, baby. And for more than 84 years, DFCU has been Arizona's largest, most trusted local credit union dedicated to creating exceptional experiences by giving back to the community and providing financial solutions that make lives better. Better. You got mortgages, loans, checking, savings accounts, credit cards, investment options, and more. And plus, the customer service is great. I've never walked in there and felt like a nuisance or a burden. And I have lost my card quite a few times. Yep. But every time they're smiling and saying, it's okay. Here's a new one. Here's what you got to do, right? And uh, they're just great people. Plus, if you want to let your Sun Devil flag fly, they've got three different Arizona State University Visa debit cards that you can pick from. And on top of all of that, if the loyalty, if the security and all of that and supporting ASU wasn't enough, you join right now, open up a free checking account online, and you can get $200 plus your choice of the three Arizona State University Visa cards. Go to desertfinancial.com slash ASU to get started and get 200 bucks for free. Yeah, I recommend if you're an Arizona sports fan that you just kind of turn off your phone for the rest of the day after you watch all of our PHNX sports broadcasts uh, and relax with some some OGs and just block it all out. Because so I'm I get overstimulated pretty easily when there's a lot Same. of people talking, um, and I really just like silence. And silence and OGs is a great combo. So if you are one of those people as well, then you should take some OGs. It's so good that they taste unbelievable and they also get you feeling right. OG's also has launched two new products made with live rosin and RSO. Uh, the OG's Naturals and the Big OG's. OG's Naturals are vegan gummies made with live rosin available in the sweet clementine flavor. Meanwhile, the Big OG's is the mega version of the gummy uh, packed with a bunch of stuff and it's just it's Big, it's just a big OG. It's a, it, it's just a big a massive one. OG. Yeah, if, like, if the ten isn't enough for you, you want to indulge a little bit more. For you. Yeah, I, I mean, listen, personally, I can't, I can't do a hundred, no. right? I can't no. do that. But there are some people are who some can, people. and there are some people who who fall somewhere in between. And if you yeah. fall somewhere in between, get the big OGs, and you're right with the flavor, dude. If they just yeah. like, I know they give unmedicated samples out when they're at live events, yeah. but if they just sold them like it's just straight up candy. Yeah. I would I would Eating eat it, it all the time, like yeah. genuinely delicious. I have I have one OGs and I don't recommend doing. Well, I mean you can if you want, but it's a very weird way to do it. I'd probably cut it up. I have one that I'd just like nibble off a piece <laughs> of every so often. I kind of respect it. Yeah. I like it, and it gets me feeling right because I am my tolerance is not where it used to be. You know what Toe Tree said he does? Huh. He puts his OGs in the fridge. Yeah, I've I've seen that before. I still haven't done that. I think I need you know to do what's that. awesome. It's, it's kind of in the same vein as OGs is putting. Um, Oh my god, what are they called? Sour Patch Kids, putting Sour Patch mm -hmm. Kids in the freezer. Freezer, okay. Dude, insane. Absolutely insane. Another thing that's insane, putting Uncrustables in the freezer. Well, that's <sighs> isn't that where you usually keep yeah, them? You put them in the fridge. You put them in the freezer? Yeah. Are you supposed to put them in the freezer? I think you're supposed to put them in the freezer. I've and then you put them in yeah, the fridge bro, to thaw. Them in, oh, them I just, no, but I'm saying eating them right out of the freezer. Just going. Yes. You yeah. don't break your teeth? No, no, no because they're, they're not super hard. The, just the inside is hard, so it's like it's like an awesome like crunch with soft breading. It's so good. I might have to do that anyway. OGs is so good. They're they're made with fresh squeezed juice as well. Like come on, so you to can learn, taste it. To learn more about OGs gummies and where you can find them, head over to ogsbrands.com. You got to be 21 years or older to enjoy responsible. Okay, real quick on the whole uncrustable thing. Uh -huh. Have you ever air fried an uncrustable? No, but that sounds pretty Buddy, incredible. Take a little bit of butter, uh -huh. put the butter on the outside, air fry that baby. Mm -hmm. I bet. Right after an OGs. Dude, Perfect air fryers, night. air fryers are so elite. Hot or not, very hot. Very hot. <laughs> I made sweet potato fries for the first time in the air fryer the other oh. day from sweet potato. Unbelievable. Making me hungry. Um. All right. Last thing to talk about today, Cooper Perry. Uh, so hey, come uh, on. There's no, a chance. I'm just. I'm there's sorry. a chance. Last thing he I retweeted guess. was a Jake Smith route. That's all I'm saying. Uh, I, I want to believe. Yeah. So I want to believe. 
Cooper Perry, the number one player in the state of Arizona, is committing uh, to his schools today, or to one of his schools today. His top four is Washington, Oregon, Oklahoma, and ASU. I think everybody is assuming he's going to pick the Ducks today, especially with you know his main selling point of Rashad Samples going to Oregon. Is there a chance that Cooper Perry puts on that Sun Devil cap come 3 p.m.? I mean, a, a, ch- a chance to find a chance, like not a non-zero percent chance. Sure. I, I would give ASU a non-zero yeah. percent chance. But part of the reason why he retweeted a Jake Smith is is because yeah. they went to the same high school. I know. Right. And so I'm all just of his, all of his ASU stuff is, is all Jake Smith. Related. Yeah. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm probably at like a I'm like 99 percent. Wow. Sure that he's not coming to ASU. I'm, I'm just going prepared. 86. OK, listen. I would love to be proven wrong. Yeah. I would love it, but not having Samp in for this and him yeah, going to Oregon is just it's really bad timing. Yeah. And if I'm the number one wide receiver in the state, like you might look at that and say, ooh, maybe not. And it, it's I'd say they saw the chance. Maybe 99% is too harsh, but mm. I, I would say it's it's way more likely than not that he he's going elsewhere. Yeah. It would be nice. I'd hope uh, not, though. I mean. But that also brings up this question. Are you a little bit disappointed with the recruitment of this program so far since Kenny's <laughs> come on board? I don't <sighs> With disappointed the in, in is state tough. recruiting especially yeah disappointed is tough I, I think it's hard because they set the bar pretty high for themselves yep. when they came in and they're activate the valley and we're gonna be so deep in here and we're gonna get all these kids to stay home but uh, somebody mentioned it in the chat and they said that they're not gonna trip if cooper goes somewhere else because they could be on the cole martin plan where you go somewhere else and then you yeah. end up coming home go, anyway not only somewhere else but go to oregon, oregon and, and then home. come back <laughs> because cole, cole martin player I think that right now it's it's kind of hard to hold this program to a standard to where like they should be a surefire lock to get Cooper Perry. Yeah. Right. A player of that caliber, a number one receiver in a state that is now known for high school football with Washington, Oregon, Oklahoma, and ASU. Those are his final four. Right. ASU's in there. That's a local school. And I think that's a that's a big deal. And if he does commit here, I mean doing backflips. But I'm not I'm not disappointed yet. I'd like to give yeah. him another year or two. So but it's the, not exactly where he promised it would be. I think that's also fair to say. The reason why I bring it up is because I think it was on three. Some some publication that just writes stuff to write a bunch of shit. They just love getting stuff out there immediately. Um they did a big twelve coaches rankings. Uh and guess where Kenny fell? Where? Number sixteen. Oh uh, so I don't know if you know that. That is dead last. Uh, really? Yeah. And and one of the things they cited was that the recruitment has been disappointing. But what I would argue that is you want to get players from AZ to stay in AZ. That's hard or to, that's harder to do than getting players to come back. So I think if you look at the portal as part of the recruitment, then, then I, I'm not disappointed at all. I think this regime has done a great job and I think they're going to continue to do a great job uh, and it's only going to get better and this this pipeline from arizona to arizona i guess it's not a pipeline it's just a street just yeah this is this the school bus that'll drop them off at arizona state the after 101 done, a, done a high school yeah the 101 uh the 101 pipeline i think is is going to be it's kind of a good name the 101 pipeline it's going to be even stronger um come the next few weeks yeah, I think you give him some time. You the give next him few months, years. Yeah, you, yeah. In a couple of weeks, it's gonna be fine. He's it because he's he is getting people. He he is dominating in a relative sense in the transfer yeah. portal and in finding a lot of good players. He's improving the roster year in year out. And in order to get local guys to stay, local guys have to see you succeed. And I think it's hard to sometimes get high school players to appreciate what's going on with ASU right now. Yeah. But once they start winning, which I think we're all pretty sure that like this is going to turn around eventually yeah. and hopefully within the next year or so, it, it's going to happen, right? Like Kenny believes he's here. Mm-hmm. He's building with the community. He's probably making connections with kids who are freshmen right now. Like he, he is in tap with the community. He has a coaching staff in tap with the community. Some of the best coaches the state has ever seen are on his coaching staff. ASU just needs to get a little bit better. Yep. And all of that is going to pay dividends. It really will. I, I'm not I'm not disappointed at all. Last question for you, Eric. Troy Brown or Heinz Ward? <laughs> Who do you want? Whoever wants to be here more. Yeah. Like I, I I'm at Chad, a point. Who do you want? Yeah. I, I'm at a point where like 
if you want to commit to being here and buying in, I, I don't care between those two. Mm-hmm. They both have a resume. They both have a pedigree. They both have some name recognition, some some more than others. But I I just need somebody who's so bought in on what's going on. And I think that's the same way that Kenny is looking at it too. Like you want somebody with a name. You want somebody with a resume. You almost have to when you lose a guy like Sam who is on that up and coming. You need to either replace him with somebody yeah. who's well-known in that regard or just well-known and established. But they need to want to be here. Yeah, they need to want to be here and they need to, to gel with the staff. And not just get along, but you have to have the same ideology and the same the same connection to to student athletes that these guys do cuz i think they would just really get it at the end of the day yeah anything else eric um i know that we're big on nicknames on this show i don't know if you saw but uh last time we did a watch along for the suns and the only time they made a run is when the chat started roasting me uh-huh. by giving me nicknames based on how pale i was nice. i was wondering if i could run a few by you guys yeah. and you can yeah. rate them uh they called me frosted flex okay that's good gringo rilla Okay. <laughs> Retired Sammy Sosa. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that, yeah. The head isn't <laughs> quite there. But. No, no, it's not. They call me Rubanks instead of Eubanks because they said the loss was all my fault. Uh, unedited Google Doc. That's really good. That's my favorite so far. White UGD. noise. UGD might have to be your name. <laughs> <UGD. laughs> white, <laughs> noise, white noise isn't bad either. Yeah. yeah. I like UGD. Yeah, there, there there was a lot. And I thought I brought it up because somebody was like, oh, you know, we're talking to Eric Gordon and Eric. And I was like, yeah, they call me they call me Jose Perez on the ASU show. And then somebody's like, oh, let's call him Rubanks. And I'm like, crap, I did myself. And the sun started making a run. So I encourage it. So That's I don't know, great. maybe unedited Google Doc, white noise, something like yeah. that. We can we can work that in there. Well, I encourage you guys to become a diehard at gophnx.com. Check out all the events we got coming up. People 100 golf tournament. Uh, is exactly a month away. Woo-wee! Come out to that. It was so much fun last year. Not only do you get to to play golf with all of us and and enjoy the great vibes of Dobson Ranch, there's also so many great sponsors that are going to be out there that are going to sponsor their their own holes where you get you know you get you know your vitamin waters or what have you at one hole, or you can get you know free swag at another hole. Ooh. It's just fantastic. So come out, sign up. Ph go phnx.com slash events. Uh, and you know, th- there's obviously prizes for the winners and prizes for the losers. And the reason why I know that is because I came in dead last last year <laughs> with Jalen and 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 Borgay and Sean, and we came in dead last. But we got the honest prize because we were so. What honest. was that? Uh, free round at Dobson Ranch. Which That's is, not bad. Which is they a, said you like need to get. Did you ever use it? It's like a hundred dollar value. Uh, no, <laughs> but. But I, I but didn't. You got it. I didn't keep it. I gave it to them. Like mm-hmm. I was like, you guys can have it because I love Dobson Ranch and I go there all the time. I'll pay however much money they want. Love Dobson Ranch and I love you guys. You can follow me on Twitter at Shane Deef. You can follow UGD, aka Eric Ruby, at Eric with a K Ruby on Twitter, and you can follow Jacob on Twitter at Jacob underscore Franklin Four. Um, bye. Go Devils in peace. <laughs> We all silly like the mayor.